At what stage of the screenwriting process would you say it's time to start thinking about selling it? At no stage. You should never think of it. That's why we have agents. Uh, it's funny. I, at my class, the class which meets tonight, in the first class, I always brag about all of the scripts that got um, written in the class that became movies. Now, most of the people who succeed don't sell the scripts that they uh, write in the class, much less have them made into movies. They use them as showcases. They win representation. They win development deals and rewrite assignments and other kinds of, of uh, rewards. Um, but there are some that have actually been written right in the classes that became movies. Um, and uh, I brag to the eight writers around the table about those. First thing I do, the next thing I do is I tell them now, please don't try to sell the scripts that you write in this class. And then I take a long silence. Uh, and I let people think about what seems like a contradiction. I've just been bragging about all the scripts that have sold out of the class, and here I am saying, please don't try to sell the scripts that you read in the class. And I point out to the student that you write in the class, and then I point out to the writers uh, that it's not a contradiction. I didn't sell don't I didn't say don't sell the scripts that you write in the class. I said don't try to sell the scripts that you write in the class. If you're thinking about the sale while you're working on it, you are doomed. You are lost. Um, you're uh, intellectualizing, you're calculating, you're getting in all kinds of uh, um, processes that are uh, that will militate against successful art. You're getting again too intellectual, too into your head when you think that way. You start to think about trends, what's popular, who might this be right for. Um, I once had a writer who'd been admitted to the program. It's extremely unusual that somebody's admitted and doesn't enter the program. Our so-called take rate, the percentage of people who are admitted who actually enroll is like 99%. Um, but there was one guy who came to me with a rude yellow legal pad. He'd been admitted. He wasn't sure he wanted to come and he wanted to know the uh, percentage of students that had agents after how much time, the median income for graduates at the five-year mark, the ten-year mark, uh, not only the uh, median, but the mean and also the average. I, I resisted telling them the mean and the average are the same. The median is different, but the mean and the average, uh, those are two synonyms. Um, and I said to him, I said, I could get all of those statistics for you that would show you, you know, that this is the, the best way to succeed in the movie business uh, to become a writer, to come to this program. I said, but I don't, I'm not going to do that for two reasons. The second reason, first, the second reason is I'm the professor. I give the assignments. I don't do the assignment. I mean, he's giving me all these <laughs> assignments, you know, and hey, I got tenure. I, I, get, I dish it out. I don't take it anymore. Uh, but first of all, I said to him, I don't think you will succeed. Um, and I, I hope I, will. I didn't say this cruelly. I said it truthfully. I said, I do not believe that you will succeed. If you come through this program, I, uh, if you enter this program, um, we've admitted you. We will welcome you warmly and we will treat you generously, but I don't think you're going to succeed. Uh, and he said, why do you think? I said, because you're sitting here asking me with a real yellow legal pad, ask me about the median and the mean and the average and the dem and who has the agent and the, the one about story and, and character and dialogue and stuff like that themes, uh, lessons, uh, the, the sorts of, of things that, that come out of art, you know. Uh, you're already focusing on uh, um, the future and how things are going to stack up. Um, they're probably not going to stack up, you know. And, and I was serious. This was not reverse psychology trying to, you know, convince them to, to come. We, whenever anybody, uh, there's two kinds of questions I, I never answer. One is, uh, should I pursue this, you know. Uh, the, well, the answer is no. If you have to ask, then you shouldn't do this. Um, it's too frustrating. Again, Philip Roth, yesterday's New York Times, writing is frustration. It's frustration, not to mention humiliation. Quote, close quote. Roth, this isn't some newcomer trying to make his way through the publishing business. This is the superstar author of, of the 31 books. Bestseller after bestseller after bestseller after bestseller. Movie deals up the wazoo. And he says it's frustration and humiliation. And don't go into it if there's something else that you can do. It's kind of crazy. It's not smart. I mean, I mentioned that my dad was a bass player. 
he had great success, made a lot of money. And what was he doing? He was dragging horse hair, which is what the bow is made out of. It's the tail of a horse, a violin bow or, or a bass bow, across sheep gut. Uh, the strings are made out of the intestines of sheep. And uh, imagine doing that for a living, dragging horse hair across sheep gut so that it makes a sound and then claiming that you think people will pay to hear this sound. They'll line up in the snow and wait outside for hours to pay big money to sit in a chamber where for a couple of hours women and men uh, will do that. We'll, you know, blow air through tubes like flutes and clarinets and so on. And, um, I mean, we were, I mentioned we were at the Philharmonic on Saturday, there's a guy beating a timpani and somebody doing bells. Uh, you know, this is like, we had so-so seats, so they would cost $230 the pair, you know. I mean, it's crazy. Art's not smart. It's kind of dumb. And um, if you're really, really smart, you don't go into it. This is not for really, really smart people. Um, you got to be dumber if, than that if you want to succeed in, in creative expression. You got to be a little crazy.